So frontline diffuse RGB cell lymphoma is, you know, remains a challenge, especially in patients with high risk disease. Um, and it's tricky in patients. Many patients are elderly um, and we don't have, uh, we haven't made much progress in um, going beyond chemotherapy based strategies. Uh, so, you know, so our CHOP remains our backbone. Recently, the addition of polituzumab has um, increased the PFS um, in this uh, disease state. But we still, you know, there aren't very many strategies for trying to um, lessen sort of the amount of chemotherapy patients get uh, for diffuse RGB cell lymphoma. Um, you know, some strategies are perhaps looking uh, a little bit more closely at um, uh, response rates early on, whether it's through um, uh, different types of PET scanning um, and also through CTDNA to really try to understand minimal residual disease. One of my colleagues is working on this as a concept that can we um, uh, reduce the number of cycles and sort of limit exposure to toxic, these toxic drugs um, if someone truly has a complete remission in their interim uh, imaging and assessment. So that could be one strategy to reduce the uh, exposure to toxic chemotherapies. You know, other ideas really are trying to incorporate novel therapies up front. You know, this strategy so far hasn't really been proven to be that effective with the exception of polituzumab in combination with RCHOP. Um, and now there's more um, excitement about perhaps adding bispecifics early on and even, you know, in second line uh, relapse using CAR T. So really trying to move away from just a sort of um, traditional chemotherapy approaches to try to limit exposure to these drugs and perhaps use a little bit more biologically targeted methods for treating lymphoma. So I think between that and better assessments, we might be able to reduce the um, exposure to intensive chemotherapies.